What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City transfer update. We've got a little bit of a development starting to happen with Bernardo Silva for everyone to uh, stay tuned for. But before we crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content and you want to help support my channel then subscribe. Press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Social media links there in the description below and popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. You can also find my email in the description below. If you want to go and hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Aiming for 500 likes or any help towards that would be much appreciated. And also, leave your thoughts in the comments below as I'm always interested in what you do have to say. And so, without further ado, let's crack on with this video. We're going to start with the outs and we have got a development from yesterday's update in terms terms of John Stones. Now, from what I was saying yesterday, um, yeah, about him being possibly loaned out by Manchester City, well, recently on Instagram, he posted that he'd been celebrating four years to the day that he'd been at Manchester City, and he was looking forward to spending many more years at Manchester City. We start reading between the lines here, all suggestion is suggesting that John Stones will be staying at Manchester City. Now with Eric Garcia potentially leaving, there is an opportunity for a player to come in. And so we may not need to sign a player so, uh, so much, but in fact, we've already got John Stones here. What it means to Taylor Harwood, Bellis, and what it means for Tosin Adara Bayo, I am not too sure, but if John Stones does stay, he would more than, people keep saying fourth choice centre-back. I think that's harsh in my opinion. Um, what it would be, would be the rotated backup option to a top-class centre-back that we will sign this summer. And so John Stones knows that if he can put in a couple of quality performances for City next season, then all of a sudden, he's in with a great opportunity of getting plenty more minutes at Manchester City. And so it looks like John Stones, after all of this, could well be staying at Manchester City. But this is all because Eric Garcia is leaving. If Eric Garcia was staying and committed to Manchester City, John Stones, I'm almost certain, would be on his way out. Now, this might be down to Manchester City simply not getting enough money for John Stones and what they value him at. I'm not too sure. But uh, what we've got on the left-hand side is Laporte and Ake. So we're more than fine for, left -hand, uh, for the left-sided side of centre-back. Right-hand side, though, we've got John Stones and Otamendi. Otamendi will leave. Garcia can also play there. Uh, he may well leave as well. So the, if that happens, we're just left with John Stones and Fernandinho, who can play there. And City look a little bit short in midfield numbers, so I imagine they'd want to, as a last resort, move Fernandinho into centre-back for next season, considering we've already got other options instead. And so what City will do is they'll sign a top-class centre-back this summer that can play on that right-hand side, and then John Stones will play that backup option potentially instead. Like I said, uh, potentially, Adara Bayo uh, and Harwood Bellis could leave Manchester City, whether that would be permanent or on loan, I do not know. City may well choose to keep Fernandinho as a midfielder only, to which case they may well use either Adara Bayo, sorry, or Harwood Bellis. Uh, I'm not too sure, we'd have to wait and see what's going to happen there, but the centre-back situation really starting to warm up at Manchester City. So we're going to move on now, and we're going to speak about Bernardo Silva, and the murmurs of this rumour of him leaving Manchester City are growing ever louder. Now, Manchester City, they want a left-back this summer, uh, but in my opinion, we may well have already solved that little issue in the form of João Cancelo. He's put in some quality performances at left-back, and once uh, if we move Cancelo to play as a left-back, uh, then all of a sudden, we don't need a left-back. We've got Mendy that can play there. I don't know what's going to happen with Zinchenko, but if he doesn't leave, he can play there. And so all of a sudden, City have got the numbers. And like I said, Cancelo has played there a few times now, the last few games, and he's not looked out of place. In fact, he's looked a lot better at left-back than he has at right-back. And so what I'm saying is that if that happens, Man City may not be looking for a left-back, but instead they may be looking for another option for Kyle Walker at right back instead. And there's one thing Barcelona have, who are after Bernardo Silva, is a right back. Nelson Semedo, his name's back in there, it's been mentioned. Now what's been mentioned is a Nelson Semedo plus cash deal to sign Bernardo Silva. So I'm going to ask in the comments below what would you value Bernardo Silva at? My value is around 70 to 80 million pounds is what I'd accept for Bernardo Silva in this current economic climate. And so if we was to sign Nelson Sumida, who I'd value at around 30 to 35 million pounds, I'd be looking for roughly around, uh, if we was going to sign Nelson Sumida and City genuinely wanted him, I'd be looking for around 40 million pounds plus Nelson Sumida 
to sign Bernardo Silva. Now, what I mean with Man City potentially selling Bernardo Silva is City are looking for an attacker this summer. And if we sign an attacker, then it could well see Gabriel Jesus move out to the wings, so on to, towards the left wing and play in a rotated option with Raheem Sterling. And then on the right-hand side, we've already got Riyad Mahrez and obviously Ferran Torres. And so City may well be moving Bernardo Silva more centrally if he doesn't leave. Obviously, Phil Foden's going to be getting more minutes. Uh, City may well be looking at central midfielders as well to maybe uh, bridge that gap. City, we know, are looking for maybe two or three more signings this summer, maybe even more, and they certainly have the money to do so. So, Bernardo Silva, uh, I've, I've just got a feeling that uh, a, a senior player at Manchester City will be leaving this summer. Some have been saying that it might be a statement sent out by Pep that nobody's safe in the squad of leaving Manchester City. I'm not sure that would be the reason. I think it'd more just be a reason of uh, there just being interest from other clubs. And when quality clubs, so like Barcelona, like Real Madrid, come sniffing around your plays, you find it very difficult to keep hold of them. Look at Eric Garcia, would find it very difficult. And if uh, Barcelona were to make it public knowledge that they wanted Bernardo Silva then all of a sudden Bernardo Silva's got a choice then does he choose to stay at Manchester City or does he pursue a move to Barcelona and that's what I'm hearing murmurs of at this moment in time just rumours just wanted to address them, and that is what I'm hearing at this moment in time. I could be completely off the mark here. I mean, the Daily Mail have uh, been mentioning Nelson Semedo and stuff, so like I'm, I'm reading between the lines. We'll wait and see what happens here, uh, but it is potentially one alternative that Manchester City could go down. Now, we're going to move on to our next story. Speaking of Barcelona, moves on to Eric Garcia. Now, ESPN is saying that Barcelona, they will not pay more than £13.5 million, so £15 million Euro for him. I've seen some Manchester City fans saying they'd accept that offer now in my opinion go five million more and i'd accept that offer so i'd be looking at around 18 million pounds somewhere there or thereabouts i mean it could be a case of 15 million pound plus some add-ons may be accepted by manchester city it's well within city's best interest to sell this summer so we get a bit of cash it's within garcia's best interest for his progress that he leaves manchester city this summer uh, because we know he wants to go to Barcelona, and it's well within Barcelona's best interest because they're wanting a centre-back. And so they want him this year rather than next year because anything can happen in football in a year. So Eric Garcia, if Barcelona are willing to maybe just go up just a little bit more, it may be enough to secure their man. We'll have to see what Manchester City do with that offer. Now we have got a confirmed transfer in this video. Jack Harrison, he has been loaned out for the rest of the season, or the rest of next season, should I say, to Leeds United once again. That is signed, sealed and delivered, that is confirmed, that is official uh, the move makes sense, it gives Harrison now some Premier League experience I am a little bit disappointed that he's not being offered a new contract, there was uh, rumours going round that it was going to be a new contract for Jack Harrison, then he would be loaned out instead he's not signed a new contract I'm not sure if that's been offered or not or whether that was just false news, I do not know but um, it, is what, it is what it is, some Leeds fans have been commenting on my Twitter saying that more than likely Leeds will be paying a little bit more um, if they want to make the, pers uh, the transfer permanent as of next season. And so what I mean by that is there is an option for Leeds United to make this transfer permanent should they want to. Um, I'm not sure if they can activate that option in January or not, but I imagine that would be more than likely for something to discuss next summer. Leeds did have that option well, this summer as well back in May, but they didn't have confirmation that they were going to be playing Premier League football. So instead... Uh, they decided to loan him again. So if Leeds stay in the Premier League, I imagine they'll take up the option to make that move permanent should Jack Harrison get more minutes, which he's played very well for Leeds, worked really well with them. He's worked with Bielsa as well, so I can't imagine why he wouldn't get minutes. And if he does and Leeds stay up, then I would have thought he would become a Leeds United player on a permanent basis as of next summer. So we're moving on to the ins now. We've got a new name comes in the form of Juan Larios, that's how you say his name is a left-back, 16 years old, played for Barcelona's Youth Academy. Apparently Manchester City want him. Barcelona and Manchester City are in dispute over him. Basically, we've got ourselves another Eric Garcia moment where Manchester City target a player from Barcelona's Academy. If we can bring him in, he'll come to Manchester City because he's a good quality player, would probably progress right towards the first team, and then would either stay at Manchester City or... <laughs> what well, I'm going to call Eric Garcia now, a three to four year loan where we sign him, keep him here, then sell him, and then he leaves. So yeah, another Eric Garcia situation this time with a 16 year old left back in the form of Juan Larios. Now, on to our last story, Koulibaly. I'm getting sick of this transfer, if I'm honest. 
So the stance from Napoli's president is he's wanting more money. There's a difference apparently of around 20 million euro from Manchester City's value and Napoli's value. Uh, Manchester City willing to offer around 60 million euro. Napoli now wanting around 90 million euro. Man City are willing to go as high as 70 million euro. So that's where the difference is, 70 to 90. I have even heard 100 million euro being mentioned as well. And what Napoli are doing is as Manchester City potentially look at increasing their offer, they're just upping their asking price. And so it's, it's just not viable. What Napoli are looking for, I know exactly what they're looking for. Jorginho 2.0 in my opinion. They're looking for interest from another club. They know that there's uh, some interest there from Manchester United. And if they come in for Koulibaly, they know then they'll get a bidding war. Manchester City won't get involved. They'll walk away and Man United will sell Koulibaly for an inflated price of probably around €80 million. Euros, something like that is probably what they'd bring him in for. And so if Man United want to get ripped off, let them. I mean, it hasn't worked out for Manchester United in previous seasons where they've competed with City. City have walked away and then they've paid way over the odds for players. So... Yeah, if they want to do that, then so be it. Uh, but Napoli, they're closing in on a sign-in. They're close to signing their Koulibaly replacement. Comes in the form of Gabriel from Lille for €25 million. Euro. Arsenal apparently have been heavily linked too, so I'm not too sure how close the transfer is to being completed. But apparently, Napoli will only announce that transfer once it's set in stone that Koulibaly will be leaving them. And they're wanting to sell their players and wanting to make some money this summer, Napoli. And so that's why they're spending some money. They've got in mind that they're going to be selling players and Koulibaly is just one of several players that possibly will be sold this summer. Uh, their president has described him as being transferable so Koulibaly is transferable it is a signing that if Manchester City want it could be done with United waiting in the wings if they make a move City will walk away and that's what I was reporting on yesterday that the deal could well be off if United come in and word from Manchester United um, Jadon Sancho looks increasingly more likely that he's going to be staying at Borussia Dortmund so Man United have got that money there that if they want to pursue other positions and spend big then Koulibaly could be one of their possible alternatives whether United walk away from that Sancho deal or not remains to be seen Summer's long, anything can happen. One thing I will say though, Koulibaly, I am sick of the saga. And so City aren't going to make their move. I'm hoping that we'll go somewhere else, go to Spain, release Claus, Diego Carlos, we can all move on with our lives and then go walk, move on to the next transfer. Because Koulibaly, in my opinion now, dragging on and on and on. And when I'm dealing with Italian sources, things change on a daily basis. The amount of times the fee has changed from 70 to 80 to 90 to even 100 million euro, it's just absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm sick and I'm tired of the transfer of Kaladu Koulibaly. So there we go. That's been the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy this video, leave a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed this video. Aiming for 500 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also you can find my social media links there in the description below and popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me. On my Twitter and Instagram, email in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button. Press the bell and put your push notifications on too. To leave your thoughts in the comments below as I'm always interested in what you do have to say. Thank you everyone so much for watching. It's much appreciated by me. And I hope everyone is safe and well. And I'll see you all again for the next daily Manchester City transfer update tomorrow. I also got some other uploads coming out here and there for everyone to stay tuned for. So plenty of Manchester City content, plenty of football content, plenty of JSGC content as well. So I'll see you all again for the next video. So I've been JSGC. Peace. Ciao for now.